If you're anything like me, then you have a ton of scrap cardstock that you just can't bring yourself to throw away. Today I have five clever ways to use that scrap cardstock as well as a bonus technique, so stay tuned for that at the end. I'm not someone who has a lot of design paper, so I was really surprised to see just how many scraps I had in my stash and just knew I had to use them. So I have five design ideas today and I have a bonus idea and I'd like to know if you guessed what the bonus idea is in the description below because it may be a new one to you. So I'm starting with one of my favorite techniques for using up scraps and that's layered die cutting. I have a crafter flower from Altenew, it's a sulfur cosmos and what I'm doing here is going through my cardstock scraps and choosing colors that I think will mix well together. I'm not worried about what patterns are on the card. I'm not worried about what brand of cardstock, anything like that. I'm literally just grabbing cardstock colors that I think will blend well together. So the packaging will often tell you what color you need to use. So whether it's the darker portion of a cardstock or a lighter, I did try and stick to that a little bit, but got um, lost along the way. It doesn't really matter with a flower and I really like that you can sort of get a different look it doesn't have to be realistic and by adding pattern paper that can add really something that's just a little bit unique so I wouldn't normally add a pattern cardstock to a flower but it does work you can do this so these flowers are really easy to layer up together. They come with a key. In particular, this one has actually a keyhole <laughs> and they're numbered as well. So basically you just grab the next number and join the keyholes together so that the gap can be seen. And the other one actually has an arrow. So they come together in no time at all. And I just use some liquid glue to assemble them. And I've got a tip here for these leaves. The cardstock wasn't quite wide enough so I'm only cutting the portions of the leaves that are going to be seen outside the flower because the end of the leaf is going to be tucked under the petals anyway and another great thing about design paper is that you can change the color of it you can use alcohol markers or pencils and I just wanted to make the center of these flowers orange so I just came and colored over top with an alcohol marker so I kept my design really clean and simple, assembled the card and added a hugs sentiment from the Versatile Greetings die set. It's another Altenew set. Layered die cutting is seriously a great way to use scraps. You don't have to have large pieces of scraps for this. You can actually use quite small ones. You can alter the colors using your markers or pencils or blend, even blend over top. I have a set of layering butterflies that I think would work beautifully as well. Have a look at your stash and see what you can use. So we're on to technique two and it is repeat die cutting. Now this can be done with any number of shapes but I have chosen a leaf from this Altenew set which is called the Tropical Leaf Mix and I wanted to use the same image three times so odd numbers do look more pleasing to the eye and I thought it'd be fun to do a leaf in these wooden kind of look cardstocks. So I grabbed out the scraps that I did have and just kind of moved them around till I liked how the colors looked together and then went ahead and die cut them. And because it is a thinner cardstock, I decided to layer it up on some fun foam. I like to use my Big Shot because this doesn't press so hard on the fun foam and squish it out too much. I do leave my die cuts in the foam while I'm adhering the cardstock to it. So I'll add some liquid glue to the die cut, layer up the die cut leaf on top. And when it's nearly dry, that's when I remove it from the foam. I like to take out any centerpieces first and then peel away the actual die cut image. And the other way that you could do this if you didn't have any fun foam or don't have any success with this technique is to cut multiples of the same leaf from some scrap cardstock and layer it up. And I want to take this card just a little step further and add a stamped background. So I'm adding the water-based ink directly to my acrylic block, giving it a spritz with some water and then just 
literally stamping the block directly onto the card front. This is just some Nina 110 pound cardstock. It's a side fold A2 card, so it's nothing special, but it tolerates that small amount of water really well. Then I'm using my liquid glue again to attach my repeat die cuts and adding a sentiment, which is an Ellen Hudson one that's a hot forward sentiment from the way with words. So repeat die cutting is a great way to use up your scraps. If you've got a smaller image, perhaps you could use five die cuts rather than the three or do a vertical orientation. If it's a longer image, there are so many possibilities. Okay, we're moving along to technique three now. And if you've heard of color blocking, we're going to be doing some cardstock blocking. And if you're anything like me, then you do have lots of strips of scraps of cardstock. And basically I grabbed out a whole heap of different rainbow ones that I thought would work well together. I've cut a piece of double sided adhesive, which is the same size as my card base. Then I can just attach these strips of cardstock to that. And by allowing myself to have different widths of strips, it doesn't matter what the original sort of scrap of cardstock was. You don't have to have it exactly the same because as you know, all scraps aren't created equal and we don't want to be judgy. <laughs> now I want to take this a step further and create a negative space sentiment. So I'm die cutting the word high. It's an Alan Hudson die and I've done this twice because I want to pop this up on the front of the card. I've done it on some scrap cardstock as well. And then I can just remove the release paper very gently <laughs> from behind my panel and adhere that to this piece of cardstock. I probably should have sat it on there before I did the die cutting, but I wasn't that organized. And there was a little bubble there, so I had to cut that away. And then I can attach it to the front of my A2 card. I've added some scraps of foam. These are the pieces that I had left over from the leaves that I just used. I don't like to waste my fun foam. And I'm using my alignment tool here, my perfect align, to make sure my panel is in the center of the card. I have also added a little bit of liquid glue around the edges of the high, just to make sure that they don't sort of lift up. And if you don't want the added dimension to keep the postage down, just simply attach your design panel directly to the card front. And on to my next technique now, and I'm going to be creating a background. So this is a great idea to use up your cardstocks. And what I did here was actually chose the same papers from the same paper pack. That way I know that they're going to coordinate perfectly. Now I have got a hexagon that I've cut multiples of. This is double sided cardstock. So don't forget to have a look at the reverse side of your cardstocks, just in case there might be something that suits the project better. I find there's less thinking if you are tending to grab stuff from the same paper pad, but you could do this technique with any shape that you have. I just thought the hexagons would be a lot of fun. And don't forget that you don't have to cut all the shapes. If you're running out of paper, you can always use the scraps to fill in the gaps for your panel. You could also cut the panel down to a smaller size to suit the cardstock, the amount of cardstock that you have. So you can actually do this directly onto your card front, but I like to do it on some 80 pound Nina cardstock. That way I can just attach it to my card front once I'm ready to go. And I like to get a nice clean edge by flipping it over and cutting it away with some scissors. So for my sentiment today, I've layered up multiple die cuts of scrap white cardstock and a brushed gold fancy enjoy sentiment, as well as some sequins. The possibilities for this technique are endless and a really great way to use up cardstock. If you have smaller pieces of cardstock and you have the energy, imagine this same technique with hexagons half the size. How cool would that be? <laughs> I'd like you to share that one with me if you do make it.
And my fifth idea today is to personalize your design. So use those scrap bits of cardstock to make a personalized card. So I'm going to be using large alpha dies today and I chose the bold alphabet one which is a very old die set from Ulta New that's a real go-to favorite of mine to die cut the word Amelia. I did a big de-stash last year and gave away a lot of the paper pads because I just wasn't using them because I always have this feeling if I use them then I won't have them um, which is just silly because that's the whole point of having them is to use them so that is my goal is to use them <laughs> and I'd like to know if you would like to see more of this style of video where I'm using up my stash or maybe using up some more of that look at this piece of cardstock here totally I absolutely used it it's gone <laughs> that went into the bin but I as you see I do have a lot of cardstock left over if you want me to use some more of that in a video just let me know in the description below but I did want to use a floral design so I have used what I had I want to take this card another step further and add a little bit of line art so I've just got a large floral design and a butterfly and literally just stamping out a a lower border with some black ink and I can just lay out the die cut word on the card front to work out where I want to place my designs and then I use some dimensional foam on the back of those and with the butterfly where I'd actually originally stamped it it hadn't quite worked out to sit on the A <laughs> so my work around that was to restamp and die cut it and then I can just pop it up now who doesn't love a card with their name on it but if you did not want to put someone's name on the card you could do words like dad or daddy mom or love you there are so many possibilities with this technique so I want to know did you guess what the bonus technique was it is foiling on design paper did you know that you can use toner foil on certain kinds of design paper? Now Alton you have this black and white essentials pack and I do recommend that you do a little test piece first so I've just got one of my scraps from that from that cardstock pack and some Crafty Critter pale gold foil and look at that it worked beautifully I ran it through my mink machine and used a piece of copy paper for the carrier sheet because the toner foil does sort of transfer onto like if you had good parchment paper or something you wouldn't want to ruin it but the copy paper works really well as a carrier sheet in the mink machine and before I actually remove the foil I like to let it cool down imagine the possibilities with this you could use whatever toner foil you have if you don't have a mink machine you can use a laminator but how pretty is that I would definitely recommend doing a test piece first all right so one wasn't enough I wanted a second one <laughs> so I decided to add some stripes to my design today and I am so impressed with how this turned out how much fun is that and in the true spirit of today I have used more of my scrap cardstock here to create some flowers and these are just some basic fun shaped flowers They're also from Alton New. Uh, it's from a set called the layered floral elements die and I also used some leaves from the just leaves die set I adhered them together with some liquid glue and to work out how I want to create my design I have a piece of scrap cardstock that I've cut an A2 window out of and this just allows me to visualize what the actual design will look like so I can move this piece of cardstock around to kind of work out my final design so I attached that to the front of an A2 sidefold card layered up the leaves with some foam dots and glue and added a sentiment that I already had made and some dewdrops 
for a bit of bling. <laughs> so it's fun to be able to stretch our design paper and be able to add some foil. I do hope you enjoyed today's bonus technique and hope that you will give it a try. So we've done so much with our scrappy cardstock today, starting with some layered die cutting. Next it was repeat die cutting. Then we did some cardstock blocking. We created a hexagon background. And then we got all personal. But I've got to say, the bonus technique stole the day, adding toner foil to design paper. And I'd like to know which one's your favourite. And the number one reason to use up your scrap cardstock is it gives you permission to buy more. <laughs> if you were inspired by today's cards and ideas for using up your scraps, then click on the thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, it'd be awesome if you could subscribe to the channel. I have two more videos here for you to watch and I look forward to seeing you there. Till next time, happy paper crafting. Bye.